Hello! Today I am going to talk to you about auto waves. Auto waves is, so it's going to be, um, it'll be an upgrade for the wave pool. Um, and if you don't know what a wave pool is, I'll put some links down in the, the, com or the, the, the description. Uh, so it's either going to be an upgrade for a wave pool and or if you don't have one already, it'll exist as a standalone thing that you can put together yourself and or purchase from my shop. Um, but it is going to be an audio reactive uh, video synthesizer uh, video feedback processor. Um, so the way that this one is going to work is... Uh, I've designed it to work with a special ABC hat that can do pretty low latency, high quality um, audio audio captures. Um, but the, I will also have an image published that'll work with just the microphone on your USB camera. Um, I will. I want to make sure that everybody knows that the microphones on USB cameras are bad and the latency is going to be high. So you're not going to have a lot of fine control and the audio reactivity may have some noticeable delay. But if you just want to play around with this and explore it, um, you can, you can, and you have a wave pool already, you can just download the auto waves image and test it out and see, see if this is a fun thing for you. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do in this tutorial is just sort of cover the functionality of like how you can use audio, you can dial in audio parameters. To, to control the, the, the wave pool, the auto waves. Um, I may be very inconsistent with um, saying auto waves and wave pool throughout this. Uh, so apologies for all the confusion I will cause during this video and also throughout like all of my communications because I, I tend to be really inconsistent <laughs> in stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, so I'll just go through. I have some pre-recorded like music that I'm gonna be playing through and we'll just show you how, how like uh, some very specific fun things we can do to dial stuff in and then at the end of this I will play an entire song and just kind of jam out to that so that's pretty much what's up um, but yeah so let's just get started so we have the wave pool the auto wave here and what I've done is what what the wave oh yeah so the the, the music on this Oops, I'm going to mute that. Um, I'm going to be making sure that the audio is recorded with the video. So I'm doing this recording on my phone using an app called Filmic Pro. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do recommend them a lot because it is a really nice way to turn your phone into a DSLR specifically for capturing off of a CRT screen, which is what I'm doing right here. This is a CRT that I'm running wave pool on. Um, but because I wanted to make sure that I capture the audio that's playing and being processed and can show you like it's a low latency kind of deal, I'm recording everything live right here with the audio. Um, I will probably, I might for the, the song at the end of this that I play around with, I might go back in and edit that as like, uh, um, make that so that's not live, just, just for the sake of so you can hear like distinctly. <coughs> what's going on in the song and stuff uh, but for the, the testing purposes I want to make sure that you can hear and see the audio as it's happening in the room right now because then you'll get a feel for like how this is operating uh, if I you know, it's also just way more work for me to go in and try to sync up and record separate audio tracks and all this stuff so yeah a mixture of utility uh, openness and laziness on my part is is uh, why I'm doing the audio this way yeah, so how it works is you've got the wave pool control thing here, and then there's going to be these three buttons on the side. And um, if none of these buttons are lit up, then the controls are just the same as the regular wave pool controls. So I can do stuff like I'll key out this, bop, bop. make that a little bit more normal, I can key this out. And then I can move the stuff around and change the delay time. So here's just a lot of classic wave pool nonsense things y'all can do with this. Um, but then let me go ahead, let me pull up this track here, which is just a kick drum. So this is a low. So we can, uh, if we want to use low frequencies in order to affect the parameters, I'm going to hit this button here. And then 
every control, everything I move on the knobs here. So I moved key up here. So you can see that it's going to make the key happen as a trigger for the, um, wow, that's a little sturdy. <laughs> the keying will go up the amount that I dialed it in. So, some really nifty things you can do with this sort of like key triggered, um, what do you call it? The sort of triggered stuff. Oh, I lost it. There we go. Um, say next I move the X over to maximum. Oh, I should do that with the low thing activated. And then you can see that every time there's like a, a kick drum, the X gets moved over and then it's sort of it's a bit more noticeable when I do this kind of thing. Although then it gets a lot more strobing, so I don't know. I don't know what's the better option here. I can mix in the filter a bit more to make it a little less aggressively stroby. But yeah, you, so you can see that with every hit of the kick, it's moving the X over in a direction. So that's pretty nifty. And then some kind of neat things you can do with this, let me turn this one off, is this one's kind of a fun thing I've noticed so far where you can sort of use this to like, you know, like if you have like a, a trigger for a movement and the key at the same time, it'll key out and then sort of shift the whole thing. So you get this sort of a thing. And then if you also change the delay time to be triggered, then It'll sort of freeze things, if that makes sense. So I turn the key off, and you can see that it's sort of like freezing. It's like a little sample and hold thing where it's sampling the kick and then like uses that as a trigger to like move things over. Um, so yeah, that's what you can do. So that's just a low frequency. Let me try going into the mids frequencies. time a little bit faster. So here's a mid track I've got here. So you can see as I pulled the bass out, uh, a lot of what the bass was doing is, is kind of switched off. And then I can turn the mids on and let's me, let me take the mids and um, key that or uh, map the mids into a zoom. See every little mid thing that shows up is going to make a zoom happen. Oh, and then I can grab a little high frequency thing. You can see the high frequency and the mids do have some overlap on this one. So it's pretty rare that you're ever going to get like something that's just like 100% uh, high or low <laughs> or mid or whatever. Uh, they'll always kind of bleed over. Uh, but I did my best to sort of game the system on this one. Um, I can take the highs and then maybe I'll turn up saturation a bit with this and change the hue. back in and the lows back in. So you can see I have each individual channel mapped to different parameters so you get this sort of like uh, uh, multi multi multi, multi uh, channel not multi channel like uh, multi frequency uh, ability to control things. layer things up too so I can also set 
you can see that zoom is set to mids right now. Um, I could also go into the low and have low be making zoom out and mids making zoom go in. You can see the low is a lot stronger than mids on this one right now. Let me see instead if I like... Like if you have like a track where you know like your percussion is sort of like split between like lows and mids, you can have like interesting little like rhythmic things that you can use to do this. And I think knowing that you have the three specific bands to work with will be super super handy in terms of if you want to compose live music with this. I did. I had a really fun Twitch stream yesterday where I tried live composing some stuff uh, with the auto waves, and it was very distracting and quite a lot of fun should have that video up on my YouTube and or Vimeo's pretty soon as well. Uh, but yeah, so that's just some of the basic functionality of this. Uh, I think at this point it's worthwhile to just sort of like jump in and then you can see I turned off all the audio and everything kind of just like stopped. Um, that works pretty well. I was having some issues with like FFT noise making the values go all over the place, but I fixed that. So, yeah. Um, this is just me goofing around with the controls right now because it's really fun to goof around. But yeah, um, so I think the next thing that we'll do is I'll just, without further ado, go into a full song with this and do some improv and uh, show you some fun stuff. All right. So let me get things set up for this song zones here. Uh, let's see, what's the best way I can try to snap so I can synchronize this easily in the thing? So one, two, three. Okay, so that should work all right. Uh, this is a song that I wrote uh, from my musical project XZX, and I'll put a link in that there too if you're interested. Let me just grab some mids in, and I'll be mapping mids to key. And grab some high. High frequencies I'll map to saturation, and then an invert mix. And grab lows. Map those to hue, and then map the lows to a zoom. You can see already this is doing some pretty good things. Okay, let's High frequencies to delay time, just a tiny bit. You can see as this high frequency lead comes in, it's going to make the delay time kind of stutter in and out. I also inverted the saturation, so that's why you're getting this sort of going from zero to full saturation on this stuff.
everything would get too noisy or too confusing. Uh, I did put on buttons that'll just erase everything, or erase all the parameters that you have set up, and also I love the map. So I'll just go erase everything right now, and we'll start the rest of this Any map, high frequencies to the king. Any map, low frequencies to X. Ooh, that one's pretty fun. Actually, here's another nifty thing you can do. So if I want this to be going sort of like unipolar, I can map or bipolar. And then keep this, and then go back over to here. And I think if I do this just right, and not quite. I'm gonna do some more experiments with this to see if I can get some more like useful bipolar sort of thing. There we go. So I map X both to low and the mid frequencies in opposite directions. So it's gonna do this sort of like back and forth thing. We also use map lows to delay time. Get the sort of freezing of the of the video. Let me try a rotate with high. Lay down a bit so we can turn it a little faster. So that's just a little fun little jam out with auto waves to show you what we can do. Uh, I will have an image up on, well, with an image going out to beta testers this week, so that means it'll probably be up on GitHub for download next week. Um, oh, that's getting loud. <laughs> and then I will have this up for pre order starting this week. Um, and that'll be on my Etsy shop, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, the pre-orders will be for um, an upgrade kit if you already have one, and the fully built thing. Um, in the future, I will be working on uh, audio reactive uh, thing for Spectral Mesh as well. Um, and also, be sure to check out, um, I have two new projects that'll be releasing very soon. Um, Artificial Life, which is a chaotic generative video oscillator, and uh, Chromatic Aberration, the Search for Sasquatch, which is a four-band colorizer solarizer. Uh, Artificial Life, up for pre-order, and for uh, beta testing this week as well. And then Chromatic Aberration, we'll be working on some more, and possibly by the end of this month I'll have uh, something... I mean, there's a version which is available right now. It's a little janky. Um, I'm going to do a lot more work on it to make it a higher quality sort of deal. A lot of this music is going to be highly distracting. <laughs> But yeah, um, thanks a bunch, and let me know if you have any more questions in the comments, and yeah, have fun.